a depressing week for me. Oh, yes. Because a while back... You lost your house. I lost my house. Now, a while back, we did a video on the original Ocean's Eleven starring the The Rat Rat Pack. Pack. And it was just awful. Like, it's an awful experience to watch it. I didn't enjoy talking about it. People really enjoyed... I love talking about it. But it's it's an excruciating watch. (laughs) We're not people who are like, oh, all old movies are bad. Like, there are movies from that era that are great. That one is no No good. good. And the one we're talking about this week is also no good. Now, are we doing this because there's a Robin Hood movie coming <laughs> Correct. out? Correct. Like, yes. <laughs> We're watching Robin... We watched Robin and the Seven Hoods. 1964. Like Ocean's Eleven, it's just about a bunch of drunk men just kind of ambling through a plot that's barely there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Interspersed with songs. Uh, and I quite like a lot of the songs in this. But this is... It's worse... In a lot of ways. I think it's better initially. Yep. I'm like, I'm pleasantly surprised by this for about an hour. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this keeps going, doesn't it? You know how they say, if you stand 10 feet from a wall, and then you walk half the distance, and then you walk half the distance again, and then you walk half the distance again, you'll never get to the wall. That's how I felt with this movie. <laughs> but at the very start, the start, Mark, it's it's a mob film, sort of. I mean, it is, but it's a really terrible mob it's film. It's a terrible mob film. As an adaptation of the Robin Hood mythos, it's also very vague and bad. Yeah. But anyway, it starts with a mob birthday, or boyth day. Birthday party. Uh-huh. Uh, for the lead mob guy, and he blows out his candles, and it, they're clearly assisted in doing so. I don't yeah. know if you noticed that. <laughs> I did, But yeah. somebody's blowing them from off screen. I mean, that's a that's a... 60-ish year old man <laughs> in the 60s who, again, smokes five packs a day. Yeah. He's not blowing out a whole bunch of candles by himself. He's absolutely not. And he does a speech where he's like, look, I, look, I'm a good boss and I don't make you guys work on holidays and I'm a, I'm a great guy. And they all toast him. And then everybody from every table gets up and shoots him at <laughs> once. Uh-huh. You don't see any gun, any bullet holes. You don't see any squibs at all. No, he just kind of goes, wait, what? But I think also back in the day, somebody would just get shot, like mm. one bullet, and they'd grab their chest and they'd go, oh, and it wouldn't really be a thing. But if you're being shot like 40 <laughs> yeah. times, surely there should be a noticeable bullet wound. <laughs> the, the mob wants to reunite and bring everybody in on together and they want they want Robbo in as well. Robbo's the Frank Sinatra character. I, I Also, what I enjoyed about this movie is that Robbo is the quintessential Australian, like, bloke name. It is, it really it's, is, it's, yeah. it, I feel the most charming character in this is probably Peter Falk's character. Yeah, Colombo. Guy, guy, yeah, guy Gisborne. Yeah. Also, this this scene is where we get... The first musical number. Yes. And it's not good. It's it's if all for one and one for all. If I didn't know this was a musical, it would have taken me maybe a minute and a half to figure out they were doing a song. They were doing that, yeah. Because Peter Falk is not a great singer. No. And there's not really any music to open it. And all of those guys, I think I think some of them are real mob guys. <laughs> so they're not singers. I, feel, I only feel comfortable saying that because they're probably all dead now. They're definitely all dead. But like, it's just a whole bunch of guys who can't sing, singing in a chorus. Like 20 guys being like... <laughs> no so his, his plan is to uh, take over the mob and take 50% from everybody. So he's, he's robbing from gangsters. How do and we're can... supposed to care, I guess? This gangster who's robbing from other gangsters, that's unfair. I don't give a fuck. But also, all these people should be dead. But also, here's the thing. Why would they all kill the guy they liked? <laughs> I don't because know. Because he seemed to be fair, and he never made him work on holidays. And this new guy's like, and I'm going to take 50% of your business. And, and they're like, like oh, boo. But you all shot the first guy. <laughs> what were you thinking? How did he convince you? Just shoot him as well. Shoot him as well. There's only one of him, and there's like 20 of you. Maybe the hierarchy's determined by how well you can sing. It could very well be. And he's, Peter Falk is not the best singer. Yeah. But he's better than them. But he's so. not as good as Frank Sinatra as That's Robert, right. Who but rolls he's more in. charming than Plank of Wood Frank Sinatra. <laughs> That's right. Plank Sinatra, as I call him. <laughs> so he comes in, he's like, why'd you, why'd you kill the old boss? He was he was the best boss, and you, you're not a good boss. And Columbo's like, I'm just going to call him Columbo. Is that fine? Yeah. He's like, what? You, listen, Robbo, we've got more guys than you. You've only got like a, a small band of merry oh. men that, like on your side. Maybe half a dozen guys, but we've got 80 mobsters or whatever. And he's like, I'm not going to join your bloody crew. I'm Plank Sinatra. Plank Sinatra. I, I won't do it. So then they all go to the mob boss's funeral or they all shot. And threats are made. They all fire their guns in the air. <laughs> they all fire their guns in the air. There's a family singing over a grave not far from them. That keeps interrupting the speech. Which is a joke, I think. I think it's a joke. There's a lot of things in this. There's no punchline. There's a lot of things in this, in this movie. And maybe the sense of humour in, it was different in the 60s. (laughs) But there's a lot of stuff in this where I only know it's a joke after the fact. (laughs) 
cool thought they stuff. were going to go over and shoot them or yeah. they'd be like a... Somebody would be pushed into an open grave. Yeah, right? I, I don't know, but there's nothing. We see Dean Martin. He's at a, he's at, he's at a club, as everybody always is in these films. Yes. And he's playing pool and he's poking a girl in the butt with the, with the pool cue. He's so smooth. Yeah. Just the smoothest manoeuvre. Well, so what are you getting out of that? <laughs> as a man, what are you getting out of by poking a girl in a butt with a pool cue? <laughs> Nothing. It's just weird. It's weird. It's just a weird power play. <laughs> so leave it alone, D Martin. Has that ever worked, mate? So then Robbo bumps into him, and there's like there's like threats, but then there's a mutual respect because clearly they just know each other from real life. Yeah, that's, that's very that's evident like, in this movie. Yeah, uh-huh. And they play a game of pool for a thousand dollars a ball and two uh, twenty five thousand for the winner. If and- you've ever wanted to see a real slow moving pool game operating in real time, but it's also they do trick shots, but they're not that impressive. And for a lot of the trick shots, they'll just cut away to Sammy Davis Jr. going, looking Ooh. like shitless shock and surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> None of the trick shots are particularly good. Every one of them, I'm like, I'm not good at pool, but I think I could do but that. But see, back in the day, again, you can tell it's a movie from the 60s because they play out the whole thing. <laughs> a, a scene where one dude gets hustled by another dude in a game of pool should be 20 seconds. Yeah. Right, it's a montage and a couple of trick shots, and the guy getting hustled going, Bleh! and then Sammy Davis Jr. going, Bleh! right. But you don't want, I don't want to see it for five minutes. <laughs> no, but also while he's doing this, he's singing a song, and I had to write this down because I couldn't believe it. But it's about a man who loves his mother being good enough for me. So that's what Dean Martin's saying, basically. I don't know what that, what is, Sinatra? what does that mean? Though. Is it Sinatra? Is the man good enough for his I, mother? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't it's know. just a song that he was famous for at the time. Okay, right. Yeah. Anyway, w- fine. <laughs> so Dean Martin wins. Instead of killing him and getting the money back, yeah. Frank Sinatra, Plank Sinatra gets him on his crew. <laughs> and he's Little John. Yeah. Dean Martin is Little John, but we're just going to call him... Dean but where's Martin. everybody else? Where's Friar Tuck? There's no Friar There's Tuck. There's no Friar Tuck, yeah. So anyway, uh, they decide to go after Columbo, Colum- Columbo, Gisborne. Columbo. Columbo, <laughs> yeah. Columbo. But at the same time, Columbo decides to go after Frank Sinatra. And what we get, this is the idea of a mob hit from, it's set in the 30s or the 20s or the 30s, but it's made in the 60s, obviously. They just run into each other's clubs with axes. And smash and everything up. smash it up. <laughs> It's and they do it funny. at the same time. Exactly the same and time. And each yeah. other, yeah. Uh-huh. And then uh, after the, the clubs are all smashed up, Sammy Davis Jr. sings a song about how he loves shooting his gun. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's got a six shooter. He's got two sh- six shooters. But he shoots, I don't, I don't know, 40 bullets maybe without reloading. <laughs> if you could get a bullet count on this, go for it. But if it's, if it's too much, don't worry about it. <laughs> And it's also a song sung by a man who's clearly lost his mind, who's going to accidentally shoot himself. Oh, absolutely. That's where that's going. Anyway, it's kind of fun, though, also. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. Some of the Rat Pack are quite talented. Yes. So they decide to make uh, Robbo, Plank Sinatra, decides to make a 100% knock-proof club. Uh-huh. Which I assumed would be something like tables that you'd hit with an axe, yep. and they wouldn't. It wouldn't work, as is tradition. Yeah, you know, like that Bond movie where his car's indestructible. Yeah, right. And trying to break into it. It's not that. We'll get to what it is, but it's going to cost four hundred thousand dollars, which is a lot of money back then and now. Some would even say. <laughs> so then Marion shows up, who's the son of uh, the gangster who was shot at the start. And Frank Sinatra, Plank Sinatra, sorry, is like, I've never seen you before. Where you been, sweetheart? I should know because I knew, I knew, buddy. I never miss a beautiful bra with a great <laughs> set of pins. Hey. <laughs> and she's like, I've just been away at private school or whatever. And I'm like, Pri- private school? How old? So I looked it up. She's 37. She was 37 at the time of this film. Sure. I mean, everybody here, I guess, is supposed to be 32, but they all look 55, yeah. as we've established in these films. Everyone is 55, and then they die. Yeah. That's the rule. So she's a, she's, a real, she's a real youthful dame in this, if she's only 37. <laughs> 37, yeah. So anyway, she wants her father's death avenged, and she offers uh, Plank Sinatra 50k to kill the sheriff, who, who's in lead with Columbo. And he's like, I don't do that. I may be a mobster, but I'm not a murder. Okay, what kind of mobster are you? I'm not I'm really sure. Is he a good guy? Not really. No. But what what kind of mobster is he? Yeah, he just runs... Like a place where you can gamble and... He just run a legitimate business. He could just do that, yeah. Probably get into business. Open a shop, maybe. So the way she, she invites him to dinner and she's like, if you kill that guy, I'll bloody have sex with him. And he's like, not 
bloody not likely sweetheart. I may have a bloody love a girl. You know that better than anybody else. But let me tell you, I'm not. I'm not bloody. Rest on gams. Gams all over your armpits. I tell you what. But no, no thanks, sister. So Columbo decides to put the sheriff in a uh, headlock. In a, in a in a cornerstone for the new police station. Uh-huh. So because it's the 30s or the 20s or whatever this is set, whenever a, a, a big stone gets put in front of a building, the whole town shows up <laughs> right? because that was television, that I was guess. That was something then. to do. That was entertainment back then. Uh, the police chief is like, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, listen, listen, the sheriff couldn't be here because he was called out of town. I am assuming there was no foul play involved with his disappearance. And the bat and the, the gangsters were like, <laughs> foul play, I reckon there was some. <laughs> ah, the mayor's like, you might say he was the cornerstone of this city. And they're like, ha, 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 cornerstone. Literally. That's where we put him. <laughs> sure hope he wasn't murdered. He was murdered. We did it. <laughs> you think there'd be somebody in the crowd who's like, wait a minute. These guys, are, I think they... Somebody look in there. Somebody look in it. <laughs> look at that stone. So anyway, there's no repercussions for murdering the sheriff. It never really comes up again. Uh, he threatens to murder Robbo. He's like, Robbo, you better pay because uh, you got to give me that 50%, baby. I got 50% gams up to my bloody whatever. It's, it's, a, it's the 30s or it's the 20s. I don't know. Whatever it is, give me that goddamn money, you son of a bitch. And Robbo's like, I won't, I won't do it. So anyway, uh, this is where it starts to drag. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that Marion thinks that Robbo, sorry, Plank Sinatra, <laughs> did murder the sheriff, but he didn't. So she gives Robbo the 50k. And he's like, I don't take money from no broad, I'll tell you that much. This is Gams or no gams, I ain't taking that money. <laughs> so I he... take that sweet dough from that sweet sweet gams. <laughs> so he gives it to the poor. He's like, give it to charity. Give it to, any, give it to literally any charity. Throw it in a bin, I don't give a shit, I don't want it. So they give it to charity. And then a man, uh, a very small man with a newspaper, is, is, is shouting at the headline that... Robbo is given to the rich and is, is the new Robin Hood. He's given to the poor. If you thought Robin Hood was good, Robbo is the new Robin Hood. And it's confusing yes. because that means that in this universe, prior to these events, hundreds of years in the past, there was at the very least the legend of Robin Hood, who was a real guy, yes. right? Or at least a folklore. And all like his, in our world. Like in our world. And all his men existed... But yet, in this universe also, there's a guy called Robbo, and there's also a Little John, and a Marion, and a Guy, and a guy Gisman, and a Will Scarlet. What is happening? And nobody notices. <laughs> Nobody's like, oh yeah, Little John, like Robin Hood. Isn't that a weird coincidence? Yeah, these movies are not self-aware. Nobody but says... I mean, you can't blame them, really. I can blame them. Okay, good. So anyway, uh, he just starts sending money to anybody who asks. Uh, again, what kind of gangster is what this guy? What kind of gangster is he? Yeah. So Alan Adale comes in. It's Bing Crosby. It's Bing Crosby. Who, by the way, is great in this yeah. movie. He's really good. Here's a fun fact about this. I don't know yeah. if you're aware of this. So this movie features most of the Rat Pack. The previous one also featured Peter Lawford. Yeah. Who you might remember as one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. You might remember him as one of those guys with a weird haircut and an ill-fitting suit in the previous <laughs> Ocean's Eleven. He's not in this one yeah. because him and Sinatra had a falling out. Right. He was going to be this role, but apparently Peter Lawford's brother-in-law was President Kennedy. So apparently, Peter Lawford arranged for John F. Kennedy to make a visit to Frank Sinatra's house. And Frank Sinatra built a helipad at his house so John F. Kennedy could visit. John F. Kennedy's advisors were like, you shouldn't go visit Frank Sinatra because he's connected to the mob and it'll look weird. Yeah. So Kennedy didn't go visit. And so Sinatra blamed Peter Lawford for not convincing John F. Kennedy to come and land on the helipad. And then Lawford and Sinatra never spoke again. So Bing Crosby was given that role instead. But here's the thing. Mm. John F. Kennedy, instead of visiting Frank Sinatra on that day, visited Bing Crosby. (laughs) So why didn't he blame Bing Crosby? Good questions. Sinatra's a real weirdo, if you yeah, ask me. Well, they, they were all drunk. Yeah, they were all... I guess that's probably true, yeah. So anyway, uh, Bing Cosby decides to be... He's going to be his account man who's going to uh, give all the money to charity and sort out where it goes because he's from an orphanage. And he's like, I was an orphan for 26 years and I was hoping to get adopted for 26 years. And I, which so I guess he's supposed is a, to be 40 in this? I, I guess. He's not, though. They're all 55. Yeah, We've talked 55. about this. That's true, yeah. So... I guess that's a joke that he wanted to be adopted for 26 years. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's, that's that's one of those jokes. One of those, one of those jokes, famous right? jokes, yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, I feel like a lot of these jokes could have been salvageable if they were sold as jokes 
or if they were edited as if they were jokes. Or if the people telling them knew that they were jokes <laughs> and weren't just reading lines. Yeah. I think maybe in the 60s, these guys, you know, Sinatra and those guys especially, were very accustomed to just saying anything and then cocking their arm with a cigarette <laughs> and then everybody would laugh. Because yeah. it was Sinatra and people were like, ha ha ha, you're so funny, friend. Well, you're not. I feel comfortable saying that now he's dead. He wasn't funny. <laughs> Here's a bit in the film which I thought you would enjoy. They sing a song about how bad Big Crosby is at dressing. Yep. And then there's a montage of him coming out in different outfits. Yeah. As a man who loves a, loves a finer clothes, Mason, yes. what did you think? What I enjoyed about that sequence, he, he comes in and out trying all these bizarre outfits. First of all, what are they all doing in the closet if they're all so bad? Secondly, he comes out at the end just wearing every exactly the same things they're wearing. Just do that first. Yeah. Just find the tuxedo. No, because that's the joke, Mason. Oh. You've only just realised there was a joke there. Ah, oh, that was the joke. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, Robbo has got his new club, his knock-proof club, and he's yep. killing it. Columbo's club's on the other side of the town, mm. not killing it. Columbo's like, what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to round up for the police, I'm going to head down there, and I'm going to bloody uh, smash up their club with axes, or whatever, <laughs> which is what we do. As is tradition, yes. So he, he's heading on down there. The club, uh, Plank Sinatra's <laughs> club... Gets a call that the, the cops are coming and the mob is coming. So basically, uh, they just fold up the club. Yeah. And it's pretty spectacular and probably really expensive for the time. Yeah, right. And it folds into a little church. R- pretty good looking, expensive for the time, and a real OHS nightmare. Because some of those people <laughs> are wedged so, into a wall. Sometimes they're just folding people into a wall and they're ducking their heads, but like the folding bit of wall is like smooshing the top of their head. I'm like, this, th- th- some people came out of this with bad backs at the very least. Yeah. And there's people on call who are just like old drunks. Yeah. Like they've, they've just got some old drunks hidden in the walls yep. for when they need to pretend this is like a church. And then the old drunks come out they, of the walls. They pile on out. So basically when, when everybody busts in, they're, they're singing a song about how booze is bad or whatever. It's called Mr. Booze. It's kind of a great song. But it goes for a hundred years. It goes for a hundred <laughs> years. And it goes even after Columbo and the cops leave. Yeah. They're just like, well, may as well not knock the rest of this. I mean, we could be making some more money on illegal gambling. But I guess we'll just knock the rest we're of the song We're mid-song, yeah? Yeah, we're not going to cancel mid-song. The thing about the folding up club is that that would only work one time. Because surely somebody who was there that night, who's normally at Columbo's club, would be like... Yeah, we all just got folded into the walls when the police came, and then they left, and then we were out of it. And yeah. then Columbo and we would had go... to wait till the song ended. It was kind of... <laughs> I mean, it was not a bad song, but it was kind of muffled because I was in the wall. <laughs> so, just the next time they came, yeah. they'd just be like, we know there's a club in the wall. Yeah. We spent $400,000 on this. <laughs> Look, there's a really obvious switch with a red light on it. I'll just flick it. Oh, it's a club again. You're all under arrest, and we're going to smash this place, <laughs> as is tradition. <laughs> You're right. And again, that's where the movie should end. Yeah. That's the ending. You got a, you got one over on Columbo. There's the end. But it's not the end. We'd love it to be. We could wrap up this video. We could all go about our day. So anyway, then Columbo decides to use the sheriff's wallet and badge and gun or whatever, which they've kept. That's a bad idea. Mm. Because, you know... Evidence. Evidence. And they frame Robbo for his for his murder. So, Ro- so Robbo... Sorry... Plank Sinatra uh, it goes to court and Columbo testifies against Robbo and all the orphans who were friends with, who live under Bing Crosby who were, well, they were all on his side because they all had Robin Hood hats and bow and arrows and I'm like, but Robbo bloody he sucks now. We thought he was cool, but he's not cool. He's bloody putting bloody mobsters in, in, in the, gra- the cops in the ground or whatever. And then Bing Crosby sings a song. He's like, hey, come on, he's all right. And they're like, yeah, I guess he's all right. And then at the, the, the trial, they're like, why should we believe this guy? He's a mass murderer or whatever. <laughs> and and the judge is like, no, give him a shot. I'm sure this convicted murderer is, is believable. But he's not. He's not. You're talking about Columbo, right? Yeah, Columbo. So while this is all happening, Marion uh, tries to convince Dean Martin to help her take over the, the Robert's business. This mate Marion is, 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 is wildly mischaracterized <laughs> yes. in, this, in, this, in this movie. And he agrees, so John's in charge, and John and, well, it's more Marion is in charge yeah. of, of Robbo's operation while he's going through this trial. So anyway, you think he's going to go to jail, but for no reason the jury's like, look, everybody who testified is a liar, we just think that's the case. Everybody holds up signs that like, Robbo's the best, Robbo's innocent and free. Even the jury have signs, <laughs> right. they've made them to come oh, out. What the, main, the, the head juror gives it this impassioned speech, Yeah, and it's like, oh, I don't believe all these, all these low-life scumbags, blah, blah, blah. and it's like, Sit down, mate. 
Just to say, say not guilty. Just say not, but he says innocent, very specific. Uh, just say not guilty and get out of there. I, yeah. I feel that the judge would call for a mistrial. Yeah. Anyway, so you think the movie's going to end there, but it doesn't. It doesn't end, it just keeps going. Plank Sinatra goes out and sings a song about probably being innocent. Being innocent. And then uh, he goes home to, to, to his club and he checks the registers, but John's bloody changed the locks. He can't believe he's good friend, Dean Martin, John, whoever, has, been, has done this to him. And he finds out also that at the soup kitchens, which they also opened, they're printing money out the back. And he's either for or against that. I'm not really because sure where he Because what kind stands. of monster is he? <laughs> he's fine with making money off illegal gambling, but he won't print his own money. Yeah, I don't know. So he goes to see Marion... And she's like, you work for me. And he's like, not on your bloody gams, doll face. And he slaps <laughs> her with some paper. Yeah. And uh, and then John's like, I didn't sign up for this. I'm out of here also. And Robbo's fine but with that. But clearly you did. Yeah, you signed up for all of it. You were very willing to step into this guy's shoes yeah, uh-huh. and take over. I just thought you, I just thought you were going to go to jail. So I figured I'd take over your business before we determined whether that was true or not. <laughs> so then uh, she goes to Columbo and she's like, listen, I want you to bloody kill Robbo. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll put him, put him in a cornerstone or whatever. So we, <laughs> As is tradition. <laughs> so we, That's what I do. I smash up casinos and I put people in cornerstones. And everybody watches. I love it. That's, <laughs> that's my fetish. I love it. So we cut to another building opening. Oh, it's for a pretzel so, building. Yeah. There's, a, there's a long speech by, I think, a German guy. I think it's supposed to be funny. It probably is supposed to be funny. Yeah, I think it's, I probably it's one of those jokes. Funny, yeah. And well, then it's funny to laugh at other nationalities. It certainly is. So then you think that Robbo's in the cornerstone, but it turns out Columbo's in there. So I guess Robbo, Plank Sinatra, is the kind of guy that does murder other people. Yeah, in the end, he does. <laughs> the end he he could have done that earlier. Yeah, so. He could have done that way earlier. Could have done that way earlier. But so Marion is told by him, you need to get out of town, dollface, because I'm the bloody big shot gangster in this town. <laughs> I'll tell you this much. I'll put you in a cornerstone. I'll put anyone in a cornerstone. I'm a murderer. Or am I? I'm printing money. Or am I? <laughs> what kind of big mobster am I? <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. No. Anyway, get out of here. Uh, anyway, so she just goes to the. Uh, newspapers and like yeah Robbo's like printing money in the soup kitchen so everyone's like he's a bad bloke again or whatever so they have to <laughs> so the police run in and as is tradition they smash everything with an axe uh-huh. <laughs> you know what he should have done What's got into the axe making business absolutely would have cleaned up <laughs> would have cleaned up so then Robbo's uh, he's, he's run out of business so at the end he's so down on his luck somehow that he's collecting money with his mates in a Santa Claus the outfit. Rat, the Rat Pack have become charity, Christmas time charity Santas. Yeah. They're standing there and then Alan a day or Bing Crosby walks past with Marion and she's taken over the business in the end. One of them's like, oh, bloody get at him or whatever. But they, they don't get at him and then they sing a song and it's finished. So kind of like the way that Ocean's Eleven just peters out yeah, and right. they don't win. Yeah. Well, what's the point of anything? It's just over. A few people have said in the comments of the last one we had to do on this that it might have been something to do with the time of filmmaking and law where you couldn't have a gangster win in the end. Yeah, You're right. just going to be like, well, I'm down on my luck or whatever. Yeah. Even though Frank Sinatra was had real life mobster ties. And he was way <laughs> off on his luck, let me tell you. Yeah. So there you go. It's, uh, it's a movie. It's bad. Oh, it's bad. It's really bad and yeah. long. I think it is worse than the other one, but it's worse in different ways. But the music is better. Yeah, it is better. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's more charm to this one. Yeah. If I turn around in three months and I find out they did like a 1960s version of Aquaman and we have to come back to these <laughs> fucking idiots, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I didn't know this existed, yeah. and I'm very upset about it. It turned out Sammy Davis Jr. was a huge fan of DC Comics, so they, they did an adaptation of every single DC property. Here we go. Actually, also, there's an extended audio version of this if you want to check it out, because there's more in this than what we've talked about, if you can believe it. Also, there's videos here every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. If you've got a recommendation for Caravan of Garbage, please leave it below. It could be a movie, a comic, a TV show. It can be literally anything. And we'll probably get round to it at some point. Yeah. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Please feel free to check that out. That yeah. comes out. Yeah. That comes out every Monday morning. But thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time when we look at a shit thing. Now, as I always say, get out of here, dollface. Take your take your gams, gams and, and take a hike. Yeah. But also yeah. grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah.